Today we are talking about copper wires and why fiber optic cables are replacing them, specifically the ones that carry the all-knowing internet that's all around us. So let's get started with the basics after this intro. Hello friends, Techman Pat here. Welcome to an educational video on tech and telco things. Make sure to like this video if you did and subscribe to support us and let me know if you want to see more content like this. Let's start. Copper is a versatile and highly conductive metal and has been used in electrical wiring for centuries. In this video, we'll explore the properties of copper that make it ideal for use in electrical wires to transfer computer data. And we'll learn about the different types of copper wires that are used in various applications. And finally, the reasons why fiber is replacing said copper wires. So let's talk about the properties of copper. Copper is a chemical element with the symbol C and a little u and an atomic number of 29. It is a soft and malleable and ductile metal with a reddish orange color. Most of all copper is highly conductive which means it can easily transmit electricity and technically it is also resistant to corrosion which makes it ideal for use in electrical wiring. This however has a caveat more on that later. While bare copper is fairly resistant to corrosion tinned copper conductors prevent accelerated corrosion against wet and contaminated environments. Tinned copper is primarily used for protecting against oxidization and corrosion. Now copper is the third most conductive metal behind silver and gold. Comparably it is about 100 times more conductive than aluminium. And copper wires are also very durable which means they can withstand the constant bending and twisting that happens in electrical systems. Although most copper wiring can last up to a hundred years, it's the wiring insulation that degrades first and generally lasts only 20 to 30 years before the copper starts degrading itself. There are many different types of copper wires that are used in various applications. Let's have a look at the three most popular. Solid copper wires. These are the most commonly used types of copper wires. They're made of a single strand of solid copper and are usually coated with a protective layer to prevent corrosion. Solid copper wires are strong and durable and they are typically used in applications where a high current is required such as power cables. Then stranded copper wires are made of multiple strands of copper wire that are twisted together to form a single wire. They are more flexible than solid copper wires which makes them ideal for use in applications where the wire needs to bend the flex such as communication cables around your home. And stranded copper wires are also less likely to break under tension which makes them ideal for use in applications where the wire will be subject to vibration or movement. Then we have copper clad aluminium wires and these are made of an aluminium core that is coated with a thin layer of copper. This type of wire is less expensive than solid copper wire and is also lighter and more flexible. However, copper clad aluminium wires are not as conductive as solid copper wires which means they're not suitable for use in high current applications. So what are those applications? Copper wires are used in a wide range of these applications and the three most common uses are electrical wiring because they're they're highly conductive which makes them ideal for transmitting electricity as mentioned before. Then we have data transmission such as ethernet cables and in telephone and broadband cables. You see copper wires are used in data transmission because they're able to transmit data signals at fair speeds but over long distances. And of course the automotive industry as you can imagine a car is full of copper wires but that's because they can withstand high currents and temperatures that are present inside vehicles. So let's look at copper and fiber cables in the communication sense. Networking. Copper wiring such as coaxial cables and twisted pair cables have been widely used for internet connectivity because it is relatively inexpensive and easy to install. However, it has a number of limitations that make it less suitable for high speed internet connections that are happening today. One of the main reasons copper wiring is being replaced by fiber optic cables is that fiber optic cables are much faster and more efficient at transmitting the data. They use light to transmit data which allows them to transmit data over longer distances without the need for a repeater or amplifier on top of how far copper can actually go. Now copper cables on the other hand are subject to signal degradation over long distances which can result in slow data speeds. Another advantage of the fiber optic cables is they are much less susceptible to interference than copper cables. Copper cables can pick up electrical interfaces from other devices which can cause data errors and of course slowdowns. Now fiber optic cables on the other hand are immune to this 
type of interference, which makes them the more reliable solution for internet connectivity. They are also much thinner and more flexible than copper cables, which makes them easy to install and route through buildings and other structures, obviously to a limit. They're still pretty incredible. Copper cables can corrode over time due to various factors such as exposure to moisture, air pollution and high temperatures given enough time. When copper cables are exposed to moisture, the metal can react with water to form copper oxide. The copper doesn't actually rust, it will produce a greenish patina called copper oxide. However, the formation of copper oxide layers will cause a significant decrease in its thermal and electrical conductivity, as well as a degradation of interconnection capabilities which means slow internet when it rains. Because once the insulation breaks down, the exposed copper just begins to degrade. Taking into account that copper cables are resistant to moisture if sealed properly and in perfect conditions. Still, when used underground for ADSL connections, the real world performance is heavily reduced compared to paper, lowering their usable lifespan to almost 15 years before maintenance and replacements cost blow out proportionally. It all depends how the installer was feeling on the day and if your pit out the front of your house gets flooded often. Now, air pollution can also cause copper cables to corrode. Pollutants in the air such as sulfur dioxide and nitrogen oxides can react with copper to form a corrosive compound that can eat away at the metal. Hydrogen sulfide is considered one of the most corrosive atmospheric pollutants. It is a weak, deprotic, reducing acid, readily soluble in water and dispersed into the air by winds. When emitted from natural, industrial and anthropogenic sources, it is a pollutant with a high level of toxicity, impairing human health and the environmental quality. It attacks copper, forming a thin film of metallic sulfides or detrite whiskers, which are cathodic to the metal substrate, enhancing corrosion. This formation of non-conductive films can lead to catastrophic electrical failure. Lastly, high temperatures can also contribute to the corrosion of copper cables. When copper is exposed to high temperatures, it can become brittle and prone to breaking. Think outback Western Australia. Australia heat. Now furthermore, copper wires have limited bandwidth, meaning they can only support a certain amount of data transmission at a given time. This makes them inadequate for modern networking applications, which require high speed data transfers in both directions, specifically connecting suburbs and homes, not necessarily internal networking. As mentioned before, copper wires are susceptible to interference from external sources such as electromagnetic fields. And fiber optic cables on the other hand are made of glass or plastic fibers that use light to transmit data. They have a much higher bandwidth than copper cable wires and are immune to said interference, making them a more suitable choice for modern networking applications. In addition to the physical properties, there is one more fact that has been contributing to the shift away from using copper wires for networking. And that's cost. Copper is a relatively expensive metal and the production of copper wires requires a significant amount of energy. Over the last 20 years, the growing cost of installation, maintenance and replacement has made them uneconomical to maintain than the faster counterpart fiber optic cables. Except the NBN, they think it's all good. Not now anyway, but they used to say it. However, there are still several disadvantages to using fiber optic cables as compared to traditional copper cables. You thought I wasn't going to go there? But I will. Fragility. Fiber optic cables are made of thin strands of glass or plastic, which makes them more fragile than copper cables. They can be damaged by bending, crushing, or even extreme temperature changes, while comparably less there are limits. Then there's the difficulty of installation. Installing fiber optic cables requires specialized training and equipment. It can be more time consuming and complex than installing copper cables. However, as the demand grows, so will the supply. Lots of people are learning and being educated on how to do that. And of course, costs, specifically around hardware to take advantage of the fiber cables. As the world transitions to a fiber infrastructure, costs surrounding the fiber optic cable will drop significantly, but the cable itself is fairly inexpensive. However, there is a little caveat. Cable length versus cost. The usable length of a fiber optic cable depends on the type of fiber optic cable. For 10 gigabyte speeds, the maximum cable length you can run ranges from the OM1, which is 33 meters, to OM2, 82 meters, and OM3 to 300 meters, or OM4 to 400 meters. Then there are OS2 fiber optic cables, which are designed for longer transmission distances in the range of 5,000 to 10,000 
thousand meters. The difference between OS1 and OS2 fiber optic cables is mainly in the cable construction rather than the fiber optic specification. You see, OS1 type cable is predominantly of a tight buffered construction, whereas OS2 is a loose tube or blow-in cable construction where the cable design applies less stress on the optical fibers. The OS1 fiber optic cable is designed for premises where the maximum distance is 2000 meters with transmission speeds of one to 10 gigabit. Now, if you ever exceed these distances or pick the wrong type of fiber optic cable, the speed of your network will suffer. And ultimately, these kinds of things dictate the cost of fiber. Yes, house to house from a node, it'll be cheap. But if you're running fiber to that node, that's when the price jumps significantly. For Ethernet copper cabling, when used for 10, 100, 100 megabits down, the maximum allowed length of a Cat5 or Cat6 cable is 100 meters. As you can imagine, anything over that distance and the performance will degrade. Let me know in the comments below if you'd like to see an in-depth video about fiber optic cables relating to internet communication in Australia. In conclusion, copper wires are strong, durable, and fairly resistant to corrosion, which makes them suitable for a wide range of applications for a time. However, in networking, fiber optic cables do everything better and faster. And when judging what a cable should do in a networking scenario, these are all that matter. And so the choice is clear. We should convert our copper underground cables to fiber. As the world transitions to fiber infrastructure and copper cables are replaced with fiber, not just another copper cable, expecting a longer lifespan from the cable, we are hoping to see a better networking infrastructure for our homes, our premises, and our businesses. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then tap the like button. If you learned something, then tap the subscribe button and the like button. Just, yeah, give us a like. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you all in another one. Bye.